Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, these doors are going to get replaced by a hidden bookshelf. And then these doors are going to get moved across the room. Now I'm not going to go all out and replace the doors with a fully seamless bookshelf that's, again, hidden. Uh, I'm going to leave the trim like it is, just put some hinges on one side, a latch on the other, box in the bottom, and make it extremely simple and extremely inexpensive to build. But if you wanted to, you know, you could attach the trim to the edges and really hide this, uh, especially from the other side. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, it is going to be much simpler uh, and it is going to be a, a pretty cool feature in this room. Uh, so I should probably get started and we'll take you guys along for the process and show you how I do it. And hopefully it turns out as well as it is in my mind. So my design is pretty simple. Um, I didn't write it down and I didn't draw it because uh, this is the way I operate. I, I will just imagine it in my head and then uh, I will build it. In fact, you know, the only, um, don't mind my Lowe's list, but you know, I only have a width and a height really is all I've written down so far. I might write down a little bit more, but, but I've got the, I've got the basic idea in my head and, and it starts with these one by sixes. So these are one by six by eight foot. Obviously it's, five and a half, their typical door jam uh, width and length and size. Um, so, you know, there's a huge pallet of them. We got some of these uh, pretty inexpensively at Lowe's. Uh, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five. We have seven of these. So at eight foot, the, the width, the door width is four feet wide. So 48 inches. Actually, this door is like 48 and a quarter. So it's slightly more wide, wider than the other one, which is about 48. So the typical width of the double doors is about 48 inches for that pass-through, and then obviously 80 inches tall for the door. So those are the measurements I'm gonna start with. Uh, it's gonna be a simple bookshelf frame, extremely simple with screws on the sides, um, really hiding it. And on the bottom, however, it's gonna be boxed. So two, two of these will be uh, on each side um, vertically and then and then the shelves are going to start from the bottom of that and then they're going to be spaced evenly throughout across the bookshelf and then we've got some really cool paneling that we haven't picked up yet that's going to go on the back um, and make it look really cool from from the back side uh, so that's the plan um, i think where i'm starting at and um i've, I've kind of laid down this this template here so i want to use this template uh, to kind of show you what uh you know kind of where to start so the biggest thing is making sure that when this is built, it fits inside of the door opening and then it turned. So this is, these blocks are set up to um, represent the door jam. And then this is to represent the bookshelf itself that's gonna act as a door. So this is gonna be my hinge point here to the right. And as you can see, if, if I make it exactly 48 inches, Let's just go with that, um, despite what the size is. If we make it exactly 48 inches, it's not going to open. So as I open this and and pretend, you know, I pivot it on the, on the far side where the hinge would be, and then I open it, and you once it's, it's you know, notionally closed again, you can see the gap that we have there. But again, once you pivot, notionally pivot it again on the, and I'm, it's, I'm pushing it here, but... Once you notionally pivot it here on its hinge, you see that the widest point is basically diagonal. So what I've done is measured the door frame, and then I've measured my first piece diagonally. So this corner will represent where the hinge is going to be. And I know the door frame, again, on that door is the door, the, the current doors that are on that door from one side to the other in the frame are 48 and a quarter inches. So I measured this diagonally until I get to 48 and a quarter, and I've marked it here at 48 and a quarter. Diagonal. Once you do the measurement, you know, you're actually closer to... 47 and, and 15 16 so not quite the same width so it's it's not a lot of, of distance you know a little over a quarter inch um so it's at five sixteenths 
um, smaller than the actual opening, but that's going to be the size. That's going to give me my size. It'll allow me to open this door, open this false large bookshelf without it hitting the edges. So when people do make these and they do want to hide these, they can, um, you can cheat this in a little more even. And depending on a piece of, of trim or other wood you have, maybe you have, maybe you have a, a, a one by just a, or maybe it's a quarter inch, you know, piece of, of rectangular trim. Um, so you could, you could cheat this in even further and then, um, put in a, a, an additional piece so that when it closes, uh, it's going to be seamless. And then that's where you can, you can mount your trim from. So that's what a lot of people do. Again, this is going to be simple. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to fill the gap later. I might. Uh, so we'll see how it looks once it's up and then I'll move on from there. But we'll get these pieces all cut. We'll lay this out, work on uh, the wheel that I'm going to use on the far end to, to keep it on traditional hinges. So it's going to be simple. Uh, again, cheap and simple and easy. Uh, and then we'll move on. All right, so let me get cutting. All right, so after measuring for the width and subtracting an, an addition, additional inch and a half, uh, you know, for the accounting for the two sides that are three quarter uh, three quarters of an inch each um, I cut my first two pieces and now I'm going to cut four at one time um, I know this isn't always the most ideal way to do it I think but I like to to do it and my way is especially if I'm alone working alone here to make sure I Go ahead and, and level, even these up. Make sure they're flush on one side and then flush, especially at the cutting point. They may not line up down there, but I'll line up the second, the second ones. But I'll cut this line here and this line here, and that'll give me the exact width on each side uh, so that I'm not wasting any board. So yeah, that's the way I do it. Make sure they're clamped down there so they don't move. Uh, once the ends are flush, and then I'll cut it here. Do the same at that end to ensure it's flush. And then I'll cut it again, and then we'll have all of our horizontal pieces cut. And then I'll just have two um, vertical pieces of cut, and then we'll start drilling holes and putting this together. I've set this up to kind of give a, a quick representation of <clears throat> some of the scrap wood of what it's going to look like. The bottom, I'm going to box the bottom, and then the each shelf is going to have 10 inches of height. So it's not 10 inches from top to top, it is 10 inches from top to bottom, then 10 inches from the top of this shelf to the bottom of the next shelf. So I'm boxing it down here because of the wheel that I got. Now the wheel is um, a little bit larger then you know I, I kind of thought it would be but this is to kind of give a representation that it fallen in here so i want there to be just enough room for this wheel to to, to, to turn inside of this box so if this is the bottom of the opening there's another half of an inch of, of uh it's about half of an in, extra half of an inch at the bottom where the door is. So the, the wheel is gonna be boxed in like that so you won't see it. So obviously it'll be able to turn and then mostly hidden, but I'm gonna to have to figure out how to adjust the rest of this um, because obviously it's not gonna hide it. I don't wanna go farther up and you know double double this up so it, so it hides it in a different way, but I mean, I could double it up, but I don't want to do that. I'm, I, I, uh, but I still need to find a way to... Um, so it's going to hide part of this, but it's not going to hide the whole thing. Um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that yet. Um, maybe, I'll, yeah, maybe I'll cut a hole in 
this top board and then take this apart because um, it looks like that's going to be just about perfect. So yeah, um, I'll get this the rest of the way together. I'll get it mocked up and then I'll find out what to do with that part and we'll go from there. And I am pre-drilling everything so I don't split this wood. Here is the finished frame bookshelf. Obviously, it's you know four foot wide, you know 80 inches tall, so it's pretty wide. It's pretty small, so it's going to have to. There will be some um, a, a paneling on here that'll be put on at a later time, which will uh, stiffen it a bit. But it's it's already pretty strong. Uh, just to show you the screws that I use, um, I have some inch and a quarter drywall screws and uh, some three inch. Uh, wood screws so on each of these on the outside edges i use the inch and a quarter drywall screws and then i put one three inch wood screw in the middle because you know it's got a lot uh obviously that horizontal load so i wanted a bigger screw because these inch and a quarter just weren't they were okay but you know i, I think it needed more um the reason i use three inches three inch screws it's not because I think it needed three inches, three inch screws. It's because that's all I had. So probably something closer to two inches would have been much better. Maybe even, you know, inch and three quarter. Um, but three inches is what I had. So three inches is what I went with. So even if you use probably two inches on this whole thing would probably be much better. Um, and then on the, you can see how I boxed in the bottom there. So one thing that that does give me the opportunity to do later is put uh, trim across the front. So if I want to put um, trim you know, baseboard trim across the front, it'll actually, you know, blend in the bottom of that a little more with the rest of the, um, rest of the floor. And then, and then because there's another half of an inch, at least, um, below that, you can cheat down that trim. So it looks like it's flush with the floor, even hide this a little more, even though, like I said, this is not going to be a completely hidden bookshelf. So, all right, I'll get some measurements on the hinges and I think I'll cut in the hinge, um, recesses on this side. Uh, and then, I'll look at putting in the provisions for the wheel that I've got for here. And then we'll get this thing ready to, to put in after we take the other door out. All right, so I have my Dremel Trio here. And I went to the door frame and I measured the height. Uh, actually, from the top, I measured the distance to the top of each of the hinges in the existing door. And then I laid out, obviously, my hinge locations all the way down the edge of, of the bookcase. So now I took my Dremel Trio and I set the depth uh, with this uh, flat cutting wood bit to the depth of, of the hinge. Oh man, that is a great fit. All right, so one of the channels I subscribe to is SV Seeker. This guy who's built a, he built a whole ship in his backyard. It's pretty cool. I think it's, Doug's his name. I think it's Doug. Terrible name, so I think it's Doug. Sorry if I got it wrong, but I think his saying, and I've heard him say it at least once on his channel, and I've adopted this as my personal 
um, motto for projects that I do. And it, the project is, or the motto is, if it's not worth doing twice, it's not worth doing. And here is my first and hopefully only twice um, problem. I don't know if you can see it. Um, when I was putting them together, the two side panels, I, there was a bow in one. I used the clamp to get the bow out, but um, thinking it might correct itself. But it right about there, it actually curves. So I don't know if you can see down the length of it as it curves to the left. And if you put, I, I got another board that I cut to length. And when you put it on, you can see this like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch on this side. And obviously this one is in. So this, this board bows, and this is going to be in a straight door frame. So I've got to replace this. I've got to take all the screws out, lay it on this one drill the holes back through, complete the holes through this one, and then and then switch it out. It also gives me a chance in this, uh, this bottom board here where I've got these markings to cut out for the wheel. I think I need a little extra space, and, and with this off, I'll be able to do that. But this is my, yeah, if it's not worth doing twice, it's not worth doing. So I'll switch these over and cut this piece out, and yeah, then we'll go from there. All right, maybe this gives us a better representation you see this gap um yeah what's that like an eighth inch maybe even more um so to lay this out and then run the screws through it all i'm gonna do is uh, take my clamp here and you can watch that yeah so now now that's out of there what i did first was square up the edges and put put two screws in each of the corners and then two on this side as well and now I've got that gap out of there I'll run these holes in and move on to the next one So I almost called an audible. I showed you this before. This is the uh, this gate wheel, heavy duty, spring loaded. It's going to take a lot of the weight. You know, I cut the slot in here. You know, centered the slot in here. But I almost switched to this one, which you know, some of these little casters, uh, you know, you just have to offset it. Uh, we've got about five eighths of an inch from the bottom to the to the floor. I, I did want to take up a little bit of that weight, the weight of this, with uh, because it is a little uneven with tile. It's not going to go inside, so it shouldn't touch the carpet or the transition, but it could. So I wanted something that had a little bit of a flex to it um, and could take some of the weight, if, especially if this had a lot of books on it. This probably could as well, but it wouldn't take the flex and it would bounce. Um, I almost called that audible because once, once this... And I, and I initially cut the slot for this centered. Once this is, if you cut it centered, this wheel cannot turn inside of, of this five and a half inch bookshelf. So if you are making a deeper bookshelf, you shouldn't have a problem centering this if it's you know six and a half or seven inch, inch or so bigger. But if you offset it here, so now that we're, now that we're offset, it's tight, but she'll turn. So. That's what I had to do. I did have to shift this over a bit. The hole is bigger than I want. I could put another piece in, but I only have one more piece and it's it's got some warped and a bunch of holes in it. So I think I'll go with this. You won't see it very much. Uh, might try to box around um, this guy here as well. All right, so minus paint and the paneling that will eventually get put on this side. This shelf is ready to go. I did break out the the cutting tool here to I was going to cut the whole whole thing out but when this wheel rubs it, it actually leaves behind some of the black marks so I just uh, got in there with the tool and, and gouged out a perfect little hole for this to to turn in so now the wheel turns and the 
opening for it is covered in this nifty little box so you can't see the uh, the hardware and the rest of this is ready to go back together so I'll go move the other door cut in those other hinges and then we will get this hung up and see how it looks this is where I'm gonna leave this project for this weekend guys as you can see over there those doors were over here I've got a little bit of trim to finish up over there uh, but that will be completed soon uh, a little bit of unique uh, trimming the a lot of my experience in home remodeling comes from a house built in like 1910 um, so one of the things uh, with that house is on all of the the door jams you know the the stop is not integrated into the jam so I thought hey I can just switch these over um, you know cut um, cut hinges cut the hinges out over there um, and then just move move the doors not so simple uh, actually not so bad over there did have to move one of the jams just a tiny bit to make them fit but here uh, I had to go back and buy new jams because the old jams I couldn't just pull the stop off I actually had to replace but here is the door Obviously, it hasn't been painted, um, so it's got some prep work to do. Um, you can see how the hinges are just, just sunk in there like a regular door. And then, you know, this opens like a door. The wheel works pretty well on the bottom. It's got a slight drag there, but then once it comes in and you've got to lift it up, there's a there's a transition down there to the carpet that eventually will go away with floors that lifts it up a little bit to make it look like it's a little unlevel but it's it's good to go we are going to take paneling it looks like this this paneling here we want to run that across the back there because it looks way better than than that but we're going to get a, another full sheet of this paneling and it's going to cover the back of this so it's going to look kind of like a Kind of like shiplap barn barn wood and i think i'm going to bring it all the way over to this edge to cover that the gap because you can see the gap there and that's required so that you know this can make the swing it needs but that'll cover this gap here and i think i'll go all the way over to the trim and you won't even see it but yeah so far so good um maybe i'll have to do an update video or maybe a short or something when um, we're complete but again you can see the box on the bottom um that you know, that does leave room for trim if i want to put trim on the bottom and make it look like baseboard goes along there otherwise you know, we're going to go all the way to the bottom with um with that paneling so it looks cool and then from the inside um, it looks really good so we'll show the inside here so this shelving is slightly wider so let's see here there is the there's that transition so that wheel has to come up over that transition just a bit. And it, come, it actually comes in here quite nicely. And then that's flush. So we are, uh, the shelving is an inch wider than the jam. So the shelving being an inch wider than the jam actually comes into this room a little bit, which is kind of cool. Um, I think, you know, it'll look like just, it might look, you know, more like just a bookshelf. Um, so whether it's a short or not, I also have, haven't decided how I'm going to do um, you know, like a hidden latch handle. Um, I only have a few ideas, very underdeveloped, but I'll probably find something around here. So it's really easy to, to use. Um, you know, uh, the kids want, you know, uh, like a false book or something like that. So I think we'll look into that and, and how that'll work. And obviously, so it can, it can un unlatch from the outside, but have a lock separately here on the inside. So thanks for sticking around. I think this will be a short video. Um, yeah, if you liked what I did here, if you hated it, let me know. We'll, um, yeah, I'll try to improve it. Like I said, simple, easy. I wasn't going for completely hidden. As you can tell, it's not completely hidden. Uh, but, uh, we wanted to replace these weird doors because, you know, this is a formal dining room, but, you know, our dining room is, is, is out there where we have room for a dining room. So you don't need, we don't need two dining rooms. So, you know, this is, um, actually projector there. Uh, and then, you know, this screen, we would put trim around here. This is a, 
basically just using this wall as a projector actually works really well it's kind of cool the kids like to watch some stuff in here play uh, play video games so that's what this room is used for um it's also got a, a pull out bed um don't mind the sheet it's just you know protecting it from animal fur uh but yeah then uh we'll have books and stuff in here and, and guests can stay uh if they want to stay so thanks again for sticking around see you on the next one